These days, the diesel engine propels most of the tonnage of all of the world's shipping. Given good care, the diesel engine provides maximum effect on minimum oil consumption. The engineer will see to that. At the moment, he's checking the temperatures of the exhaust gas and the cooling water. To make a further study of the diesel engine, we leave the engineer and his instruments and put sight classes on the engine from top to bottom. This reveals the movable parts. Pistons. Piston rods. Crossheads. and connecting rod and crankshaft. This sectional view shows the functions which the most important parts of the engine have to perform. In the upper part of the cylinder, an amount of fuel oil is burned, which causes the temperature, and thus the pressure, to rise in the combustion space. The gas pressure acts on the piston, from which the force is transmitted through the piston rod and the crosshead. to the connecting rod. And results in a torque. The thermal energy has been converted into mechanical energy. In any given piston position during the working stroke, the crosshead is exposed to a vertical force from the piston rod. And a force in the direction of the connecting rod which together result in a horizontal force. This horizontal force must be transmitted to the engine frame, and for this purpose the crosshead is provided with slide shoes supported on vertical surfaces, the guide bars on the engine frame. Powerful forces are at work in a big marine engine, and, accordingly, the engine parts are of major dimensions. To provide sealing against the high pressures, the piston is fitted with piston rings. The rings are fitted by means of a special tool which evenly distributes a bending moment to the rings, thus preventing the danger of a permanent deformation. On some engines, the crankshaft is so big that to facilitate manufacture and installation, it's made in two halves, which are later bolted together. Each half is built up from a number of main bearing journals, crank webs, and crank pins. Let's look a little closer at the principle on which a two-stroke engine works. Fresh air is supplied by a turbocharger. From the turbocharger compressor, it's conducted through air coolers into a common scavenge air receiver along the engine and to the scavenge air space around each cylinder. When the piston approaches the end of the downstroke, the exhaust valve opens, the scavenge air ports are uncovered, and fresh air flows up through the cylinder. Exhaust valve and scavenge air ports are then closed, and during compression the air is heated, causing the ignition of the injected fuel. The combustion increases the temperature, and thereby the pressure which drives the piston downwards. The exhaust valve opens, the pressure falls and the combustion products are expelled while fresh air flows in. The air is again compressed. 
fuel is injected, ignited, the gases expand, the exhaust valve opens, then the scavenge air ports, the cylinder scavenged, and the cycle is repeated.